Research and innovation in Futuris. Like water from a faulty tap, power leaks from all electronic devices, whether in use or not. The fact is, a portion of our energy bill goes down the drain because the existing microchips are not that efficient. As we'll find out in this program, the electronics of tomorrow will use much less power. But first, let's see if we can already cut that energy bill with smarter air conditioning. In the Centre for Sustainable Building in Kassel, the internal climate is controlled by an energy-saving computer algorithm. The system analyses weather patterns to determine when to turn the air conditioning on or off. It also saves energy by relying on natural ventilation and solar power whenever possible. Suppose that we have this building and there is a high wind, so we know that certain rooms will be cooled quicker because there is more losses to the outside. So our system is able to predict that a particular room or a particular zone will have more energy needs in the foreseeable future and can start to optimize by pre-cooling or pre-heating uh, that particular room using, if possible or if available, energy available from the photovoltaics. The system deals with each room individually using sensors that measure temperature, humidity, CO2 levels and the number of people present. It also reads work schedules, so it knows which rooms will be occupied and when. Based on that, it guarantees comfort with minimal energy cost. This smart algorithm has been developed within a European-funded project, bringing together researchers from five countries. What we do in this building is simulating the building and there are different hundreds of different possibilities based on the forecast of tomorrow, the temperature radiation. And with that, we create a strategy for the building that will save energy and will give more comfort to the users. The simulation software runs on a cloud network, leaving the local operations to simple devices. What we have is a small computer like this one that is able to manage all the complete building, so receiving a signal from the cloud and sending it to the building, for example, a blind going down. Users can interact with the system through a web interface on their wireless tablets or smartphones if they need to control something manually or just check sensor indications at any time. Running similar algorithms on a larger scale, the Energy Research Centre at Aachen University operates like a giant refrigerator to keep the right temperature in its multifunctional offices, conference rooms and laboratories. It taps into underground energy reserves. What we see here are 16 borehole heat exchangers with a depth of 100 meters. We are uh, pumping warm water uh, into the ground and um, we pump out uh, cold water uh, with a gradient of 4 uh, grads uh, uh, Celsius. The geothermal field, solar panels and even excess heat from server rooms provide some useful energy for the internal climate system. The computer software uses all available sources to optimize the temperature of water running through pipes in the ceilings. After the heat pump cools the water or heats it up, it distributes it in the whole building. And we do this by distributing it in the concrete core activation. This is just pipes in the concrete uh, ceiling. And what the Pebble system does, it tells the heat pump what temperature this water should have. A smart home that anticipates weather changes and intelligently adjusts the heating to users' needs can start saving valuable energy in the very near future. The building will adapt to your habits when you come home from work, when you leave for leisure time, etc. And then adapt the heating system, like preheat the building or preheat, pre-cool the building and will then save energy that's money for you and, on the other hand, raise your thermal comfort. Another European project tackles so-called energy vampires. 
All electronic devices from mobile phones to supercomputers leak power, even in the sleep mode. In Europe alone, the loss of standby power amounts to the whole electricity consumption of Austria, the Czech Republic and Portugal combined. One of the issues we have is that the transistors today, and the transistor that's the building block of all electronic circuits, uh, and they're leaky devices, that means that even when they're not functioning, when they're not actually performing a function, uh, they're still leaking power. So a lot of power is actually lost without being used for anything. And we are working on a new type of transistors called tunnel effect that can hopefully remedy this problem. So that means they're losing, they're leaking less power uh, when they're not being used. The power is simply less. Uh, that means that they consume less power and we can reduce the power of electronic circuits made by these devices compared to conventional devices. A transistor works like a water tap enabling the flow of current. Theory predicts that next generation tunnel effect transistors will require much less voltage for maximum efficiency. The challenge for the scientists today is to successfully combine silicon, silicon germanium and semiconducting nanowires. Put the silicon wafer inside uh, this reactor back there and then we grow nanowires on this uh, silicon wafer and uh, using this structure, the combination of these two materials, we can then make a new type of transistor which allows for low power operation while still maintaining the same speed as uh, modern transistors. The goal is to reduce the power consumption of computer chips by 90% and virtually to zero in the standby mode. With this efficiency, many devices won't need charging at all. They'll simply harvest all required energy from the environment. Thin and flexible self-powered devices can revolutionize fields like healthcare, security or communications. An interesting outcome of this is that combining ultra-low power electronics with flexible substrate technology um, and with energy harvester that can be integrated together could result in this type of autonomous system enabling completely new type of application in smart object of everyday life like a wearable system like a object in, in our environment that can include a lot of function and functionalities that we can use in order to have a better life and have a better interaction with our environment. So far as the research continues, it's still hard to tell when the next generation of transistors will be ready for industrial scale production. Some scientists estimate it will take another 15 to 20 years to plug the energy leaks.